Provost had an article that just came out, real good article dealing with expatriation and the exit tax. One thing I would like to say before I start on this, um, if you're thinking about relinquishing your U.S. citizenship, uh, it's, it's going to be probably a backup around a year and a half to two years before you can get out. So my suggestion is if you're thinking about doing this, I would be getting out sooner rather than later, uh, especially if you've got a, a, an increase in income that's growing a lot or your business is growing a lot because you're just going to pay a lot more in taxes if you decide to do this later. Also, the figures I'm going to give you today is assuming that Biden does not come in and change these figures and, and raise them up where your taxes are going to be a lot higher. And I can just about tell you they probably will go up substantially from these figures I'm going to give you today. Also, if you get a chance, if you will go to our website, if you want to legally get your income taxes to zero, how to get a second passport as quick as 45 days. Go to www.citizenshipquickly.com. Hit that top bar that says apply with us, fill out the questions. Hit that bottom bar that says send it to us. We'll get back with you. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell uh, next to the uh, subscribe button. And uh, if you want new videos as they come out automatically, hit that subscribe button here to the right of your screen. And uh, if you got a question or comment, put it below, and I'll be glad to get back with you. All right, now let's talk about the expatriation of the, uh, of the exit tax, using the exit tax in place. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, it took me about a year to do mine. There was no backup back then, uh, and this was pushing them pretty hard. Now you've got not only incompetent government, slow government, but you're going to have this pandemic that's playing a number here too. So you're looking at, uh, they've already got, all these embassies are all backed up to the hilt. Uh, so they're going to have to get through all those people to get to you because it's, you're going to basically have to stand in line to go through this process. And it's a very slow process, even when things are normal. OK, so if you're thinking about doing it, I would be going ahead and, and trying to get this stuff done. Now, I want to just go over a couple of things they talked about in this article. It was talking about the U.S. citizens that are um, living abroad and foreign nationals residing in the U.S. are renouncing their citizenship in record breaking fashion. It talked about here in the article and it stated that during the uh, first three quarters of 2020, the IRS published 5,045 individuals who have made the ultimate decision to expatriate and formally cut their ties with the United States. Uh, this amount is significantly higher than the numbers uh, they stated that they had seen in the past. In 2019-2018, the respective uh, number of expatriates leaving behind their U.S. citizenship was 2,071, and then the other figure for the other year was 3,974 individuals. Now, the Department of Homeland Security publishes key information and statistics detailing the current immigration environment of the United States. Uh, reported on an annual basis, the most recent publication suggests this trend may continue further than expected in the future. Statistics show that from the year of 2017, there has been more than a 20% decrease in the number of new arrivals migrate into the U.S. that have been granted the status of lawful permanent residents, otherwise known as green card holders. The number of individuals entering the United States from foreign jurisdictions is actually falling. Now, I, I, I talked about legal, not illegal. The illegal is coming through the roof, okay? The number of individuals, the status of lawful permanent residents, otherwise known as green card holders, is what is coming into the United States uh, in the past. But now that is, that's the legal way to do it, one way to do it, but that's dropping off uh, tremendously. Uh, and, and the number of individuals entering the United States um, from foreign jurisdictions uh, is falling. Uh, at the same time, they're stating that they're, they see an increase in the number of U.S. citizens living abroad and giving up their U.S. citizenship. All right, now, what factors contribute to this shift and how might it be affected uh, by making a similar choice in the near future is what I'm going to talk to you now. Now, historically, tax practitioners have taken the viewpoint that U.S. tax law, uh, also called FATCA, regulations and the burden imposed on U.S. expats and U.S. foreign nationals by these laws very much explain the uh, shift in desires of U.S. citizenship. Uh, compliance requirements and the increased cost associated with U.S. tax compliance has been one of the key deciding factors of whether or not U.S. citizens consider the option of expatriation for themselves or, in most cases, their families also. Now, studies show that the U.S. tax law is not the only concern of individuals exiting the United States 
as a nation this past year, they say that they had experienced unparalleled political uncertainty and a global uh, pandemic that is still uh, shifting life in many aspects from work to home to relationship and moving abroad. Now, these are the top reasons they stated the individuals are exiting the United States. One is global pandemic. Uh, that's the first one. The second one is uh, political turmoil. Number three is social unrest. Number four is uh, proximity to family and friends uh, in business. And also number five is economic opportunity and stability. Number six is foreign uh, nation advancements and incentives. Number seven is reduced tax liability and burden. I really think that number seven is true for all of them, but a lot of people don't put that in the relinquishment form. Uh, it does ask you when you file out, when you file the uh, uh, the expatri- expatriation form, uh, you're just why you want to leave the U.S. And uh, if you put on that form that you're doing it for tax reasons, um, there could be a law that that could come out and they talked about it in the past that if you state that and, and it's proven, it's pretty hard to prove it, but if you write it on that form, it's very easy to prove because you've already put it on there, uh, that they could try to keep you from coming back to the U S just some directions on when you're filling that form out. I'm not telling you a lot, but I'm saying if there are other reasons too, uh, you, you know, you can also put it's a private matter. You don't have to disclose, uh, you know, uh, your, your intentions, as long as they don't reject it, which they have not done in the past, uh, for you know, uh, it, it not not answering that maybe uh, f- fluidly, uh, you know. But uh, what this is the key that you got to remember: if any law changes, and, and and they go back to that form and they see that form, and I'm not telling you to lie on the form, but I'm saying if they go back and they look at that form and they change the laws, that could implement you in. Uh, coming back to the U.S. on what you put on that form. So these are things you need to think about. Uh, There are other things that I don't have time to go in right now on that form uh, that they ask you, and uh, you need to be careful when you're filling that form out. Tell the truth, but you need to be careful about what you're saying on that form, okay? All right, now, uh, they talked about here in the article, too, that expatriation comes with consequences applicable to any individual giving up their U.S. citizenship. Examples include but not limited to... Number one, uh, giving up the right to vote in U.S. election. The, that's not a big deal to me. Number two is government protections and assistance while traveling abroad. The chances of using that is like a pin in a haystack. Number three is citizenship for minor children born abroad. Number four is unrestricted travel into and out of the country. All right, now, two things I will tell you. Uh, Medicaid, you will not qualify for that anymore, but I'll tell you from, from experience uh, medical care outside the U.S., even with Medicare paying for your stuff in the U.S., and, and the difference that you have to pick up if you don't have a Medicare SUP policy, I can tell you I found it's cheaper outside the U.S. picking up the cost yourself in most cases than qualifying for Medicare and then paying the difference that Medicare doesn't cover. That's how expensive U- U.S. health care is. Okay? Now, I've heard a, lo- a lot of people say, too, that you don't qualify for Social Security that's a bunch of bull crap, okay? As long as you quali- whether you relinquish or you're a green card holder that gave up your green card doesn't make a difference. If you pay in for 40 quarters, uh, you qualify for Social Security, okay? It's that simple. Now, will that change in the past? I don't know. I'm just telling you what it is now. All right, now, each of these are examples of non-tax consequences in the U.S. The IRS assesses an, exec- an exit tax on individuals deemed covered expatriates. Giving up their U.S. citizenship may be a tax-triggering event for some individuals seeking this option. All right, now, 877, this is Section 877, and Section 877A govern the tax treatment of any individual expatriating from the United States and deemed by the IRS a covered expatriate. The rules apply to all U.S. citizens who have been permanently settled uh, abroad and uh, U.S. foreign nationals uh, that have established a law for permanent residency on or after June the 17th, 2008. Now, what does it mean to be a covered expatriate? This is what I'm going to go over here. This is important. You know this if you're thinking about relinquishing. Okay, now, any citizen living abroad or any U.S. foreign national residing in the United States will be considered a covered expatriate and subject to an exit tax if he or she meets any of the following three tests. Exceptions and special rules apply in certain circumstances on this. Number one is tax liability test. All right, now, under this first test, and this is one that you're going to have to really, uh, you you want to be truthful on this, 
uh, you can get appraisals and stuff to actually back this up. But the first one is uh, under this test, an average and annual tax liability, uh, a net tax liability exceeding the IRS threshold of, um, of 171000 uh, or 172000 for 2021 over a five-year period prior to the year of, of expatriation deems an individual a covered expatriate for two U.S. tax purposes. All right, now, this amount is uh, adjusted annually for inflation, and Biden could come in and change this figure. He could, oh, he could make this thing uh, where your tax liability could, could be triple. Um, so, I mean, he could lower this, this uh, figure quite a bit, which increases your taxes. Number two is net worth test. All right, now, under this second test, net worth assessed at a value of $2 million or more deems an individual a covered expatriate for tax purposes. And remember, too, this figure could actually drop to a million, okay, or could drop to 500000 Remember, you've got a very liberal president in, in Congress right now. So the longer you wait, the more likely this figure could drop. I don't think it's going to go up. I think it's going to go down, if anything, which means it's going to make you <clears throat> qualify more than likely to uh, pay higher taxes. The third one is the certification test. Now, uh, under this third test, failing to certify under penalties of perjury, that all federal tax obligations uh, have been met for the last five years. Okay, now if you've been one of these guys that have, haven't filed your income taxes for five years, uh, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have to get those filled out. Uh, the certification will be made on the IRS form 50, uh, 8854. It's a thick form. That everybody has to fill out when you expatriate. Um, and uh, this has to be filed with the cover expatriates uh, filing U.S. tax return. All right, now, um, this is, uh, these are the three tests you're looking at, but I'm going to tell you something. These figures change almost every year, okay? So, and they could tr change drastically with Biden in. All right, now, worldwide property is deemed is sold at fair market value on the day prior to expatriation date. And capital gains tax will be assessed on the property at a closing procedure to relinquishing U.S. citizenship. The recognized gain is uh, then reduced by the exclusion amount of uh, 737000 for 2020, uh, but for 2021 it's 744000 The remainder will be taxed at a maximum capital gains tax rate of 23.8%. But folks, I can just about tell you this is going to go up, okay? So uh, you can plan on paying higher uh, if you are covered expatriate, you plan on paying higher taxes, and also you're more than likely are going to actually um, are going to qualify because Biden, I think, is going to change these requirements where they're going to be draconian. He's going to make it where it's going to be the the taxation is going to, you, you you being a covered expatriate is going to be at lower levels where it's going to hit you. Okay. All right, now, these are some things you need to think about. If you want to learn more how to legally get your income taxes to zero, how to get a second passport as quick as 45 days, go to our website, www.citizenshipquickly.com. Hit that top bar that says apply with us. Fill out the questions. Hit that bottom bar that says send it to us. We'll do what we can do to help solve your problem. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button at the right of your screen here and that notification bell next to that subscribe button. And I would like to hear from you. If you got a question or comment, put it below. We deal with a lot of citizenship by investment, residency by investment countries all over the world. And I look forward to talking to you on the next video. Take care.